All right, so in this problem, I have one to the power of x is equal to two. Now to solve this, I'm gonna take the natural log or ln on both sides. So I have ln one to the power of x is equal to ln two. Now if I have something from ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so I get b times ln a. So in this case, I have ln one to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So I get x times ln one is equal to ln two. Now, if you guys already didn't know, ln of one, this is actually equal to zero. So I have x times zero is equal to ln two. And x times zero is zero, so I get x zero is equal to ln two. And well, ln two is equal to 0 0.693, but there is no solution because the variable x is gone. So this means that there's no real solution. However, there is still a way to find the value of x here. So Euler's formula, this states that if I have something in the form e to the power of i times theta, this is equal to cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. And I know this may seem a little confusing right now, but just bear with me. So let's say that theta is equal to zero. Then this means that we have e times i times zero, which is simply e times i times zero which is equal to cosine of zero plus i times sine of zero. And cosine of zero, that's equal to one. And sine of zero is zero, i times zero is zero. So I have one plus zero, which is equal to one. So this is equal to one. Now, another thing that you need to know is if theta is equal to 2k pi, which is a full length unit circle. So in, in this case, I get e to the power of i times 2k pi, and this is equal to one. So now we know that this is equal to one, right? And remember, our original equation was one to the power of x equals two. That's what we want to solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch in one for e to the power of i times two k pi. So now I get e to the power of i times two k pi to the power of x is equal to two. Now to solve this, I'm going to take the natural log or ln on both sides. And now I can move x to the front. So I get x times ln e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to 2. Or sorry, ln 2. Now, this is the same thing as i times 2k pi times x times ln e. So I'm just using the ln property again. This is equal to ln of 2. And ln of e, this is equal to 1. So I'm left with i times 2k pi times x times one, which is the same thing, is equal to ln of two. Now to solve this,
I'm going to divide both sides by i times 2k pi. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to ln2 over i times 2k pi. And now i squared, remember i squared, this is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to multiply i on both sides. So I get x is equal to ln2 times i over i squared times 2k pi. And i squared is equal to negative 1. So I get x is equal to negative ln2 times i over 2k pi. So this is my final answer to this equation. All right, so in this problem, I have nine to the power of x is equal to 36. So obviously we wanna find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm gonna first start by rewriting my equation. So I have 9 to the power of x is equal to 36. And now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I get log 9 to the power of x is equal to log 36. And an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. In this case, I have log 9 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So this is going to get me x times log 9 is equal to log 36. And this is why logarithms are so important in exponents, because for solving exponential equations, x is an exponent, and we need to bring x down to be a normal term, and the only way we can do that is by using logarithms. Now, obviously I want to isolate x, so I'm going to divide both sides by log 9. So then these two log 9s cancel out. And I get x is equal to log 36 over log 9. Now, we want to simplify this as much as we can. So I'm going to rewrite log of 36 as log of 9 times 4. And I have this over log 9. Now, there are two more logarithmic properties that you guys should know. So the first one is that if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. And the second one is that if I have something in the form log of a over b, this is equal to log a minus log b. Now these two along with log a to the power of b is equal to b times log a. These are the three basic logarithmic function uh, equations that everyone should know. Now going back to our problem, we have x is equal to log 9 times 4 for log 9. And as you can see, we can use our first property here. Log a times b is equal to log a plus b on log 9 times 4. So now we get x is equal to log of 9 plus log 4. Now I have this over log 9.
Now from here, I'm going to rewrite this fraction as log 9 over log 9 plus log 4 over log 9. All I did was divide log 9 with both of these terms. Now anything divided by itself is 1. So log 9 and log 9, these two cancel out. And I get x is equal to 1 plus log 4 over log 9. Now from here, I'm going to rewrite log 4 as log 2 squared. So I have 1 plus log of 2 squared over log 9, I'm going to rewrite as log of 3 squared. And the reason I did this was because, remember, this property, log a to the power of b is equal to b times log a. I can move the 2 to the front on both of these, so I get x is equal to 1 plus 2 log 2 over 2 log 3, and now I can cancel out these two 2's. So, if I, if I ever so have something in the form log a to the power of b over log c to the power of b, these two exponents just cancel out. Now, from here, log 2 is equal to 0.3. 301 and log 3 is equal to 0 0.477. So I have to just plug these back in into our original equation. So I get x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.301 over 0 0.477 and 0 0.301 over 0 0.477 is 0 0.631. So 1 plus 0 0.631 is 1.631. So this is my answer.